Okay, hello everyone. Uh, by now we've uh, reached week 10 and 11. Well, this is week 11, and we're supposed to be on module uh, 11 on IPv4 addressing. Uh, the next topic we will look at is uh, IPv6 addressing. But in this lesson, this is lesson 3, uh, lesson 1, lesson 2 are pre recorded videos, I've uploaded them uh, with activities. Uh, I believe and I hope and I trust that you are you are going well. I do understand that there's some at some stage you'll you'll be a bit behind in your studies, uh, given given your uh, workload or given your work commitments, family commitments. Uh, it's still okay because uh, we we have about six weeks uh, in between uh, by the time we reach week 14, and the 15th week is when we have the. Uh, on campus uh, boot camp uh, where you're expected to travel into Medan. Uh, so I've given you the date uh, for the boot camp. Okay, so at least between week uh, 14, the six, uh, the weeks in between before we have our boot camp, at least that gives you some time to do the catch up work. Okay, so I'm, I'm just following our normal schedule to try and cover those topics. Uh, up until week 14, from the time onwards, that's where we can do catch-up work. Okay, so you you still uh, you still can be able to submit assessment tasks uh, up until that time. By week uh, uh, before we come to the we can you come for the boot camp. That's when all uh, online assessments will close, and then we will have the capstone project. Okay, so I, I hope uh, that is clear. In this lesson, I'd like to cover lesson, uh, uh, the last part of uh, module 11. If you go to the reading content, that's 11.7, 11.8, and 11.9. And that's on uh, uh, subnetting to meet uh, network requirements. Uh, given a set of requirements for subnetting, you implement an IPv4 addressing scheme and then uh, we look at VLSM uh, how to create a flexible addressing scheme uh, using variable length subnet mask now you remember uh, if you had a look at uh, fixed length subnetting uh, based on the octet boundaries uh, we really do the subnetting based on uh, uh, the boundary addresses or the octet boundaries which means that every subnet will have the same number of IP addresses, rather host in each of the subnet. When it comes to variable length, the, the term itself explains variable length. So we will not have the same subnets, sorry, same number of hosts in every subnet, but we will have, we can have different numbers. Uh, so in that uh, section, I'll explain why VLSM is important and how do we uh, do variable and subnet masking. It's similar to the previous uh, session I covered on uh, uh, subnetting based on octet boundary, but this time you can uh, change uh, the, the prefix length or you can change the mask uh, because you are not not uh, restricted to the, uh, the classful address now. So this is sometimes called classless addressing. The last section is just uh, highlighting some importance about uh, uh, once you know VLSM, how you can be able to use VLSM to do structure design. Okay, so given a set of requirements, uh, how do we implement uh, an IPv4 addressing scheme? Okay, so bear in mind you have two types of addressing. You have classful addressing and you have classless addressing. And when you're doing subnetting, you can subnet uh, based on classful or you can do classless subnetting, and that's where VLSM comes in. Now, in terms of subnetting uh, addresses, private addresses versus public uh, IPv4 address spaces, 
particularly for enterprise networks, they will have, most networks have an intranet, okay? Uh, that's usually a company's uh, internal network, uh, typically using private IPv4 addresses. And then you have the DMZ. Uh, these are usually companies' um, uh, core devices uh, facing the internet, okay? And devices in that DMZ usually use public IPv4 addresses, okay? And then you, you, you have your own private LAN. Now, typically a company could use the uh, slash 8, 10.0.0.0, and then uh, subnet on the slash 16 or slash 24 network boundary, okay? By using the slash 8, they can further subnet down to slash 16 or slash 24 network boundaries. The DMZs, uh, DMZ devices would have to be configured uh, with public IP addresses because of the fact that uh, all the core devices within the DMZ or the demilitarized zone, that's what DMZ uh, stands for, usually face the internet. Okay, so remember private addresses are not routable. Uh, public addresses are routable. So anything that does not fall into the uh, private IP address range, that's considered a public IPv4 address. Uh, especially with IPv4, okay? Now, when we're talking about uh, trying to manage uh, the set of addresses, especially when it comes down to the private addresses, there are two considerations when you're going to uh, start planning your subnets. The first one is you need to look at the number of host addresses that are required for each network. And then you also need to look at the number of individual subne subnets needed. Now, it is at this stage that I, I should remind you that uh, when we are looking for the number of uh, networks, as you would have seen in the uh, previous video, we, we borrow bits from the left going to the right. When we start to look for the number of host uh, addresses required, we borrow from the right and we go to the left. Okay, it's always the opposite. If we're looking for the number of subnets, we borrow from left to right. Looking for the number of hosts, borrow from right to left. Okay, so these are two considerations you need to take note of when you are planning your subnets. Uh, for instance, uh, in a small network uh, of 50 users, let's say, and you want to submit based on a functional uh, departments. Now, that's a small organization, and you would, you know, with 50 users, you would probably have only two or three departments. And let's say each department, uh, one department might have 10 users, another department might have uh, another 10 users, and another one will have probably 30 users. Okay, so requirements will differ based on uh, the setup of an organization. So it's a case-by-case -case basis, but regardless of the uh, type of network, these are two considerations, the number of hosts or the number of uh, subnets needed. Another example would be, especially in your uh, DMZ networks, you, you typically will have a single router facing, uh, facing the outside uh, network. Okay, so this could be the ISP, okay? and this is your own uh, DMZ router. Now, between this point to that point, this is only two addresses required, okay? So in cases where there are only two addresses required, you, you're not going to use the slash 24 uh, sub, subnet mask because you will you end up using only two and waste the rest of the addresses. Okay, so you need to look at how many addresses do we really need? If there's only two, then I need to find what subnet mask is going to give me two hosts? You see, not two subnets, but two hosts. Now, what if uh, I need an address structure that will allow me 10 subnets? Then you need to look for a, a, a network address or a subnet mask that will allow me to have uh, 10 hosts. Okay, so how many bits do I need here that will give me, sorry, 10 subnets? Uh, if you're looking at a thousand hosts per subnet, one subnet, and then the other subnet I need only, uh, let's say, 126. Okay, and the other subnet I need only uh, 30 hosts in that subnet. And 
this is going to be a point to point, so I need only two addresses. See, it depends. The number of hosts, uh, again, when you, when you identify the number of hosts required, then you look at how many subnets. Okay, so this will help you to start creating your, uh, planning your subnets and creating your address uh, structure. Okay. So the, the key point here is to try and minimize unused host IPv4 addresses and maximize subnets. Okay, that's the whole idea here. Okay, so here's a good example, a very simple example. You have a corporate headquarters that have been allocated a public uh, network address of 172.16.0.0 slash 22. Now slash 22 means you have 10 host bits. Now this was given by your ISP, uh, meaning that it's it's now going to provide at least a thousand plus host addresses. There are five sites and therefore five internet connections all going to the ISP. So this means the organization requires 10 subnets with the largest subnet uh, requiring 40 addresses. So that's a key thing. When you're going, when you're given an IP address by your organization, the service provider that is, uh, you then look at the IP address and you, you decide. When you're planning, you, you, it all comes down to which subnet has the highest number of hosts. Okay, so you're going to subnet based on the highest number of hosts. You see, if you have a look at this example here, you will notice that the corporate headquarters here requires 40. Okay. The brands requires brands here requires 30. This requires 25, 10, 15. Okay. The largest is 40. Okay. So you're going to do your subnetting based on the highest. Because if you go to the lowest, if you take, for instance, 10, then what about the 40? What about 30? What about 15, 25? Okay. So you have to subnet based on the largest number of hosts. Okay, so if you're planning your uh, subnets given this IP address, 172.16.0.0 slash 22, you now need to divide that slash 22 further to allow you for 40 hosts, starting from 40, and then divide further to allow for 30, a subnet that will allow for 30, and a subnet that will allow for 10, 25 and 15, okay? So you need to su subnet based on that. Notice that these are different number of hosts. That's where VLSM comes in now, okay? That's where VLSM, uh, this is now pointing us to VLSM. Okay, so again, you, you see we have one, two, three, four, five networks, okay? Now, five networks does not mean we only need to create five subnets. You have another network here. That's another network. That's another network. That's another network and another one here. That's how we end up with 10 subnets all together. Okay? And each of those 10 subnets will end up with a slash 26 subnet mass. Now that slash 26 subnet mass again is based on the highest. Okay? It's based on the highest number of hosts. Okay, so let's let's just pause this video for a while. And then you look at the 172.16.0.0 slash 22, okay? Uh, that's 10, 10 hosts, uh, 10 bits per host. Okay, so two raised to the power 10, that's more than a thousand. Okay, now our highest number is 40. So how many bits do I need? Okay, two raised to the power three, no. Two raised to the power five, no. Two raised to the power six, Two raised to the power five, that's uh, 32, so no. Two raised to the power six, yes, okay. Two raised to the power six, 64. Okay, we only use 40, but at least that gives us uh, the number of bits required. Okay, so notice that we now start borrowing, okay. We start borrowing. So notice here from the 10 host bits, that's eight from the uh, last octet and then another two from the third octet, okay? So 10 host bits. If you borrow further down, you have, 
you have another additional four bits. Okay, so that makes it a slash twenty six. Okay, slash twenty six uh, subnet mask. So out of that uh, slash twenty two, you now end up with a slash twenty six for all of those ten subnets. But it doesn't stop there. Slash twenty six is based on the highest, and then you fed the subnet down. Okay, for the slash thirty. It will be different. Okay, for the slash twenty-five, it will be slash something else. For the slash fifteen, it will be something else. For example, okay, for the slash uh, for these uh, when connections from the branch to the ISP, you only need two addresses, so it will be slash thirty. Okay, so you only need two addresses, and so on. So it's going to uh, be variable lens now. Okay, you will have different. Uh, Different uh, addresses, different prefix lengths for each of those subnets. So we look at this in the next section uh, on how VLSM can be used to address this. Okay, uh, so what I'd like you to do is try and watch the video on uh, VLSM basics. That's video number one, and look at the VLSM example. Uh, that will help you to understand this concept better. Okay, so. Here's, here's another example, okay? You are given a topology here. Seven subnets are required, okay? There is four lens and three when links, okay? So you have one, two, three, four lens, okay? And then you have the fifth one is a when link, sixth and seventh, they are when links, okay? So you have a total of seven subnets. Okay. So given the seven subnets, you then decide, okay, upon that seven subnets, given the IP address, whatever IP address your ISP gives you, how do I create a subnet, uh, create a, a structure that will allow me seven subnets? That's the first thing. So once you identify what mask will give you that, the next thing is to look at what's the total number of hosts per subnet? And then do I need to subnet further down based on the requirements I have? Okay, so here's an example. Each of these networks all have different requirements for the number of hosts. But if you look at all of them, the lowest is two hosts. Those are the when links, okay? You just need one IP address on this end, one an another one on here, another one here, here for each of these when links. But for the LAN network, okay, for the LANs, the highest will be the 28 hosts, okay? So you need to start when you're creating your uh, subnets, okay? So you will have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then six to seven will have slash 30. Because uh, you, you only need to borrow two bits. So two bits, two raised to the power two, that's four. Minus two, you are left with two addresses. Okay? So you, you only need two addresses. Again, just one for, one for this end, one for this end, one for this, one for this, one for this, and also this. So that's for your uh, when links, number six to seven. Now, your highest will be number four, okay? LAN number four, because LAN number four needs 28 hosts. Okay, so given the subnet mask slash 27, you now identify, do we need to further subnet down to this number of hosts? That will give you an idea of uh, what prefix is required here. And then you look at the next one, 25 hosts, that's number one. Then you write down what subnet mask will allow me uh, 25 hosts. Again, your starting point will be slash 27. Okay, so you are working from the slash 27, and then you're dividing further down. And the second one, what subnet mask will give me slash 20, and so on and so on. Okay, so you start looking uh, for the uh, prefix based on the requirements. Again, two considerations there the number of subnets required and the number of hosts for each one of those subnets. Okay, so 
based on the previous example, you notice the point-to-point -point WAN links only require two addresses, okay? So if we were to give them the total uh, from that uh, slash 27 mask, uh, that will give us 30 host, uh, 30 host IP addresses for each one of those subnets. But then we will only need two here, and we end up wasting 28 addresses. Okay, so we need to further divide that down. That's how we end up with uh, uh, slash 30 here. Okay, so we only need two. So it will be the same here as well. You need only uh, slash 30, you, on, you need only two. Okay, and we start looking at the highest number here. Okay, so 28 by 3, 84, 84 addresses are unused. 30 minus 2, 28, each when subnet wastes 28 addresses. Uh, so th there's going to be a lot of address wasted here. So you need to look at each one of those subnets. Based on the requirements, the number of hosts required for each subnet, you start to further divide down, okay? So that's the importance of VLSM here, uh, to avoid wasting addresses by enabling us to uh, subnet an existing subnet further down into smaller subnets based on the number of hosts. So we don't waste uh, addresses in there, okay? That's the importance behind why we have to do this or why we have to do uh, VLSM, okay? So that we don't waste address space. Okay, so uh, these diagrams might help. The, the left side displays the traditional subnetting scheme. That is the same subnet mask, while the right side illustrates uh, how VLSM can be used to subnet a subnet and divide the last subnet into slash 30. So let's just uh, try and see if I can zoom this in. Okay. Okay. Have a look at this. Okay, so if we were to go by traditional, we would end up with all the subnets having the same number of hosts. So when we apply variable and subnet masking, now we are able to take one subnet and subnet it further. Now, the key thing here is when you're subnetting, you make sure that each of your subnets don't overlap, okay? Because you're going to end up with problems. Okay, so when you're uh, subnetting, be very careful when you are creating your subnets. Uh, so each one of these subnets is not supposed to overlap. And that can be avoided by working with the highest. Okay, that's why I mentioned this earlier on you begin by looking at what's the highest number of hosts. Because when you do that, now you can create subnets where that can cater for all the, starting from the highest, going down to the lowest uh, number of uh, host IP addresses required. Okay, so you, you see here, we can take just one subnet and further divide it to create eight smaller subnets of two hosts each. Okay, this will be for the, uh, um, when and then we can use other subnets for the lens okay if you if you have a look at this you see these two hosts two hosts two hosts that will come from uh, this subnet here so we have created eight smaller subnets two hosts each and we only need to use one two three the other five will can be for reserve. Later, when we want to expand our network, we still have five subnets here of two hosts we can use in case we add router five, router six, router seven, and so on. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subnets of 30 hosts each. Now, if you look at our highest here, 28, okay? So we can say assign building D, uh, we give building D uh, this subnet, okay? Uh, building C, we give it uh, this subnet. Now, we only need half of that, okay? So we can further divide that down, okay, into smaller subnets, and we use one of those subnets here. Uh, building B, we can give it this. 20 host is enough, so we don't need to further subnet. 25 host is enough, we don't need to further subnet. Okay, so you see we start assigning uh, subnets to each of those LANs and the WANs. Okay, so that's the whole concept here. It's a, a 
very much a straightforward concept. Uh, when we are using VLSM, we begin by satisfying the host requirements of the largest subnet, and then we continue subnetting until the host requirements of the smallest subnet are all satisfied. Okay, so you start uh, assigning and creating your topology address assignment, and then you come up with your physical topology and your logical topology. So normally it will be your logical topology that will have the uh, IP addresses uh, shown. So this is an example of the uh, logical topology diagram. Okay, so the last uh, point is on structured design, implementing a VLSM addressing scheme to create a structured design. What I'd like you to do is you, you have a lab activity that uh, you've been given, and this last section is very much a practical one. So you, you try to use that lesson to complete this last part on implementing a VLSM addressing scheme based on the given requirements. Uh, the key points here to take note of is that um, planning is very important. Uh, as a network administrator or network engineer, IP network planning is crucial to, for you to be able to develop a scalable solution. You see, the key word there is scalable. Okay, so you envision the growth of the network and you, you design or you plan so that when there is a change in the network, you, you don't have to make a um, major shift uh, to your address planning. You just need to work with what you've already planned because you, you were able to uh, envision the growth of the organization and come up with a scalable solution for your enterprise uh, network. Okay, so you need to know how many subnets are needed, how many hosts a particular subnet will require, what devices are part of the subnet, which parts of your network use private addresses and, <coughs> and which use public and many other uh, factors. Okay, so it, it all comes down to uh, proper planning and uh, uh, coming up with uh, scalable solutions. Also examine the needs of the organization's network usage <coughs> and how the subnets will be structured. Now, for instance, uh, here, at the, here at an academic uh, institution, uh, network administrators have to think about how the school is going to grow and evolve uh, over the years. So the planning today is not going to just uh, take into consideration the needs of the present time only. They will have to also consider uh, future needs as well. So perform a network requirement study uh, by looking at the entire network to determine how each area will be segmented, uh, determine how many subnets are needed or required, how many hosts a uh, first subnet is needed. Also determine DHCP address pools and layer two uh, VLAN pools. So later when you, when you get to um, CCNA2 and CCNA3, we'll start talking about uh, uh, DHCP address uh, addressing. We look at uh, dynamic uh, host configuration protocols, uh, version four and for IP version six as well. Okay. Uh, and of course, uh, within, a, within any, any given network, there are different types of devices. Uh, you have end user clients, and in most organizations, as, as they start embracing BYOD, bring your own device, you need to also take that into consideration. Uh, you're not going to be manually assigning IP addresses. Uh, most organizations will consider using DHCP uh, to reduce uh, errors and burden on network support staff. Uh, and also there'll, sooner or later, there'll be a need for IPv6. So in CCNA2, we will start looking at DHCP version six and stateless uh, auto address configuration or sometimes called SLED. Uh, servers, peripherals, uh, servers that are facing the internet or that are available on the cloud, they also need uh, public IPv4 addresses. Uh, intermediary devices, uh, gateway devices, VPN gateways, uh, VPN routers, uh, firewall devices, all of those devices will need uh, IP addresses. So when you're developing an IP address scheme, it is generally recommended that you have a, a set pattern of how addresses are allocated to each type of device, okay? <coughs> and make sure you document that. So documentation is very crucial. It will really help uh, network administrators who later join in when you have left the organization or when you hand over things to uh, someone else. Okay, so this is your lab activity. Uh, it's up on uh, 
NetaCAD. Okay, so that, that's your final activity for this module. And that's, that helps you apply the concept in structure design. Okay, you'll be required to examine the network requirements, uh, design a VLSM addressing scheme, and then start assigning IP addresses to devices before you verify connectivity. Okay, so thank you for your time. Uh, that's, uh, that's it for lesson number three. Uh, keep in touch with me via email or on FB message or FB group, uh, post on the group uh, discussion forum about any issues that concern in assessment. So uh, if you're still struggling to cope with uh, the lessons, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, we still have that uh, lag time in between. Uh, by the time we reach week 14, that's roughly five weeks from now, uh, week 11, 12, 13, 14, less than five weeks. Uh, after we complete uh, the last topic on uh, week 14, you have that uh, space in between before our boot camp for you to do some catch up work. Okay, so between now until that time, that's, that's your window for you to uh, complete any outstanding assessment task and submit uh, before we reach the uh, period for uh, the dates for the boot camp. Okay, have a blessed weekend and keep in touch.